Welcome to another lesson of MATLAB Face Detection Tracking and Recognition course. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to do real-time face detection and tracking using MATLAB. First of all, get inside the MATLAB Face Detection Tracking and Recognition folder and create a new folder named Real-Time Face Detection and Tracking. Now, launch the MATLAB. Once you are on MATLAB window, click on this Browse for Folder icon and locate the Real-Time Face Detection and Tracking folder. Get inside this folder and click on this Select Folder button. Then click on New Script and save it as Real-Time Face Detection and Tracking. To perform real-time face detection and tracking, we need to access the webcam. To access the webcam using MATLAB, we need an add-on named MATLAB Support Package for USB webcams. Let's check if we have this package or not. In the command window, type webcam and press enter. If the package is installed, it would show the camera specifications. However, in our case, we have got an error because the package is not installed. Copy MATLAB support package for USB webcam from here then click on home tab here you will see the add-ons icon click on it now paste the text we copied a few moments ago here and click on the search icon here is the support package for webcam click on it then click on Install. A new window will appear. Click on Accept. Wait till the installation is completed. Once the installation is completed, click on the Finish button. Close the add-ons window. Now if we type webcam and hit enter, we will see the camera specification. Our system is now ready for real-time face detection and tracking. While working with real-time face detection and tracking, variables stored in this workspace may cause errors. That is why, to remain in safe side, add this clear all at the beginning of the code. It will clear everything from the workspace. Then create a variable named cam and initiate a webcam object. Then run this code. We need to check the available resolution of our existing camera. For that, in the command window, type cam dot available resolutions and hit enter. Here are the available resolutions. Depending on your webcam, the available resolution may be different. I'm going to use this one. Now write cam.resolution equals 430x240. After that, take a variable named video frame. And we are going to use snapshot function to read the frames one by one from the cam object. Now it is time to initiate the video player object. For that, create a variable named video player. We are going to assign the video player object to it. The first argument of this object is the position. In the second argument, in a set of square brackets, we define the position. The first two value are for left and bottom corner. 
The second two values are width and height of the video respectively. Create another variable named face detector and assign the casket object detection object to it. We use this object to detect the face. To track the face, we need a point tracker. Create a variable named point tracker and put the point tracker object in it. Now, I'm going to initiate three variables for while loop. The first one is run loop equals true. The second one is number of points equals zero. And the third one is frame count equals zero. Now, declare a while loop. It will keep looping as long as run loop is true and frame count is less than 400 frames. If you want to run the webcam for longer, you can increase the number of frames. Then end this loop. Inside this loop, we are going to do the detection and tracking. First, inside the video frame variable, we are going to store the frames from cam object using snapshot function. Then using the RGB to gray function, we are converting the frames into grayscale and storing them in a variable named gray frame. Then write frame counter equals frame counter plus one to increase the frame counter by one in every iteration. Initiate an if condition. It is true when the number of points is less than 10. At the beginning of this if condition, we are locating the rectangle that encloses the face on gray frame using step function and face detector object. Now, if the face rectangle is not empty, then using detect minimum eigenface features function, we're going to find the points of the rectangle. The first argument of this function is the frame where the image is located. In our case, it is the gray frame. Then we need to tell the function whether we are interested to get feature of entire image or a particular region. We are interested for a particular region. That is why we are specifying region of interest or ROI here. The ROI is the location where the face rectangle is located. We are using this one comma colon to get the value of the first row of the face rectangle matrix, which is actually the starting location of the rectangle. Next, create a variable named xy points and write points dot location to convert the points to xy values. Now, the x values of xy points variable has the number of points we need to initialize the point tracker. Create a variable named number of points and use the size function to get the x values only. The first argument of this function is xy points and the second argument is 1. This second argument specifies which value we will get. Here, 1 means the x values. Now release the point tracker to empty it. Then initialize it using initialize function. The first argument of this function is the object we want to initialize. Here, it is point tracker. The second argument is the xy value where we want to initiate the tracker and the third argument specifies 
on which frame we are going to initialize it. In our case, it is gray frame. Once the tracker is initialized, assign the XY points to a variable named previous points so that later we can compare the distance between new XY points and these previous points. Create a variable named rectangle. Now we are converting the face rectangle which is around the detected face into points using bbox to point function. Now create a variable named face polygon. When the face will move at different angles, the face rectangle enclosing the face will be transformed into polygon to adjust with the geometric orientation of the face. It is done using reshape function. The first input argument is the transpose of the rectangle variable where the points of the rectangle are stored. Then, with this one here, we are creating a single row matrix. This empty set of square brackets has been used to automatically adjust the dimension. In the video frame variable, we are going to assign the output from insert shape function. The first input argument of this function is the video frame, where we are going to insert the shape. Second argument is the name of the shape, which is polygon. The third argument is the location of where it will be drawn. The fourth argument is the line width and the fifth argument is the value of the line width. Now, in this video frame variable, we are going to assign the output from insert marker function. This function is going to insert marker on video frame where there are XY points. The symbol of the marker is plus and color is white. And this is the end of the first if condition. This if condition is true when the number of points is less than 10. When the number of points is more than 10, we consider that there has been significant change in our face orientation and we need to transform the shape of the rectangle geometrically. At the beginning of the else condition, we are going to find the number of XY points and their presence. Here, is found is 1 if there are points and 0 if there is no point. Now, create a variable named new point. Then store the values of the first row of XY points by using this is found comma colon. Create another variable named old point. This time store the values of the first row of previous points in it. Now the number of points is the number of points stored in no point variable. Create an if condition. It is true when the number of points is more than 10. At the beginning of the if condition, we are going to create a row matrix. The elements are x form, old points, and no points variable. Then we are going to estimate the geometric transformation between old points and no points using estimate geometric transform function. The input argument of this function is the previous old point, no point, similarity, max distance, and the threshold. Here, the threshold is 4, which means minimum 4 pair of points will be candidate for estimation based on their similarity and maximum distance. It has become a long line. Use three dots to break the line. Now, 
take the rectangle variable and perform the transformation using transform points forward function. The first argument of this function is xform variable where the estimated transformation information is stored. The second argument is the rectangle where we are going to perform the transformation and the transformed rectangle is stored in the rectangle variable. We cannot insert this rectangle directly on the frame. We need to resize it to generate x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 and x4, y4 pairs of points. Create a variable named face polygon. Then use the reshape function. The argument of this reshape function is the transpose of rectangle matrix. This one is generating a single row vector and this empty set of square brackets has been used to define the dimension automatically. Now we can insert this face polygon in video frame. For that, take the video frame variable again, then take an insert shape function. The first argument of this function is the video frame, where we want to insert shape. Then the name of the shape. It is polygon here. The third argument is the variable where the polygon is stored. It is the face polygon variable. Then I'm setting the line width to 3. Now we are going to insert the marker in the video frame variable again in the same way we did in the previous if condition. Now set the new points to previous points variable and set the point tracker to this updated previous points. This is the end of this if condition and this is the end of the previous if condition. It is time to set the video frame to video player to see our program in action. We do it using step function. The first argument is the video player and the second argument is the video frame. Now take the round loop variable again and check if the video player is open using isOpen function. If we close the video player, then run loop will be false and the while loop will be terminated. This is the end of the while loop. Now we need to clear the cam object. We also need to release the video player, point tracker and face detector object. I hope that there is no mistake in this code and it will run properly. Let's run the code. Something is wrong. Let's click on this line and see what happened here. This one is causing the error. Let's remove it. Run the code again. Something went wrong again. The video is not playing. This time it is a spelling mistake on line 57. Let's correct it. This time everything is going to work perfectly. Run the code. I'm moving my head. Going away and coming closer to the camera. The system is working perfectly. This is how we can make a real-time face detection and tracking system. I hope you have understood the procedure. If you find this lesson helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends and most importantly, do not forget to subscribe.